Before we get started, I want to share that this is a collab with the beautiful and wise Emma from the channel Emma Jo Goodness, which I will have linked both above and below. She and I are both fellow YouTubers, mommies to toddlers, and as fate would have it, mental health counselors. If you enjoy being here, then please go check out my friend's channel and tell her I sent you. Hi loves, and thank you so much for being here today. If you are new here, then we are all giving you a very warm welcome. My name is Jessica and I run this channel called Mental Health Mom, which is a community of parents and caregivers working together to encourage each other throughout the week while doing what needs to be done. I have a master's in clinical mental health counseling. I am a mental health counselor here in Florida, taking a little time out of the field in order to raise my infant daughter. I have experience in both the individual and group therapy setting. I also have experience teaching at the university level, um, performing neuropsychological assessments and evaluations for a broad range of psychological conditions. And I also have experience as a researcher. My goal is always to help individuals use the tools that they already have in order to become their favorite versions of themselves and lots of my subscribers and supporters on this channel are so lovely to comment that these videos are very helpful that it does help them to become their favorite versions of themselves it helps them to remain mindful and have a more conscious existence throughout the week but there was one video that I posted a couple of months ago where I actually asked my viewers for their help and I wanted to know what objects you guys use the most often throughout your life because I wanted to find a way to relate those objects back to mental health so that when you see those objects you know, around your house or on and off through your everyday life that you would be reminded to take care of you and your mental health. So you guys were so amazing and so generous and you gave me lots of ideas. I'm going to make several videos for this series, but I wanted to address one of those objects today. The first object that I'm going to address comes from the comment left by Nicole in Wayne's World. I encourage all of you guys to check out these channels that I'm mentioning. Most of these are smaller YouTubers and it would be really nice if we could just all support each other in our YouTube journey. Um, so hi Nicole and Wayne. Um, she said, or they said, I'm sorry. Oh, I hope you're both feeling better. We are feeling much better. Thank you. Um, my vacuum. I use my vacuum every single day with all of my animals. Well, Nicole and Wayne, so do I. <laughs> I have lots of animals. In fact, you can probably hear puppies behind me. They're playing in the living room. We are currently fostering five little puppies that are seven weeks old. And so, yeah, I've been breaking that vacuum out quite a bit. And as soon as I saw this, the wheels in my head started to turn and I got that evil little laugh because I was like, I know exactly what to do with this. So a lot of people end up coming to therapy when crap really hits the fan, right? And that's in most cases. You know, when we just have a little bit of pain in our leg, that's not when we go and see the doctor. It's when we're really dying and thinking that maybe this leg might even have to come off sometimes. <laughs> that that's when we actually go to the doctor. When when the crap really hits the fan. Um, and it's the same with mental health. Most of my clients and I started our therapeutic relationship not at a time when they were just trying to maybe add to their character and explore some things that they had been conscious about over the past couple of years. They come in when they are really, really struggling with depressive or anxious symptoms or possibly even things that are a little more on the serious side such as um, some schizophrenic symptoms or maybe bipolar disorder. What I find in many cases is the things that these clients are coming in with are symptoms that have been swept under the rug for many, many years now. And had these issues and symptoms been handled and managed as they came up, then this individual would be in a much better position, a much healthier position in the present day than they were. In many cases, what I do see is that an individual has something that happened in early childhood. This one event somehow shaped 
the way that this individual views the world and themselves at a very, very young age. And that in turn affected lots of things that that individual did from that point on. In many cases, this was a really bothersome event. It was something that this individual's grandmother said to them when she was really, really hard on them, or perhaps it was a really dangerous situation that this individual repressed at a young age because their young mind didn't fully understand or know how to process it. You may have something that you've been dealing with for a long time and you're thinking, you know, I know it bothers me, but it really isn't that big of a deal. And here's the thing that I hear the most often. I really love this person that said that to me. This person is one of my favorite people in the world. They didn't mean to hurt me. Very harmful words, by the way. There is a difference between intention and impact, which I will address in a different video. But the fact remains that people we truly love are truly capable of hurting us. And just because you love this person, it doesn't mean that this was not something that can change the course of your life. It doesn't mean that something they said didn't have a negative impact on you, even if they didn't mean for that to happen. I encourage you all to resolve your conflicts, even if it's just with a friend or if it is uh, through seeing a therapist like myself. If you understand that you have conflicts that are taking away and diminishing your quality of life, it is never too late to address those conflicts and they will continue to build. What you wanna do is be like the vacuum, go ahead and suck all of that dirt, that nastiness up, rather than sweeping it under the rug because we all know that when you sweep that nastiness under the rug, it may not necessarily stink at first, but it will especially if you keep sweeping everything under the rug. There comes a time when you just gotta lift the rug, get that vacuum out and suck all the nastiness up and put it somewhere else. And that would be my equivalent to coming to therapy and resolving and processing through your issues. It doesn't mean that you're talking bad about this person that did this hurtful thing to you. It doesn't mean that you don't love them. It simply means that you love yourself and that you are willing to work on yourself. It more than likely will even help you to have a better relationship with this person in the future because you're not harboring any resentment. When you process fully through your issues, that gives you the opportunity to have a transparent relationship with not only yourself, but in turn, the people around you that you do truly love and treasure. Stop sweeping your crap under the rug, get it out in the open, give it a good processing, even if it's just with a trusted friend, and resolve your issues so you can live your best life today. All right, thank you again for all of your comments. I'm gonna try to do as many of these ideas and suggestions as I can. Um, I did see a lot of redundancy in some of the comments, so I think that I'll be able to actually um, get through a lot of these ideas in a relatively short amount of time. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel because it's super helpful for us. All right, I will see you guys next time.